Uh, let's get to business on a Friday. So much to talk about. Mm. Lions are going to be front and center, no doubt. But that's not all. The TJ joins us at 3 o'clock. I-, I wanted to bring up something, even if for just one segment, because, yes, I'm I'm scared about Sunday. I'm panicked. Uh, I don't. The injury report is not going to be kind to the Lions, but we'll get there. I am proud of Rico Beard because there is something on this show sheet that it could have been gloating, it could have been arrogant, uh, it could have come from a place of privilege. But instead, Rico, I think, is being realistic about something. And it's a football question for you, the people. But isn't it time to end Thursday night football? Look, I, I, I obviously the Giants aren't very good. The Niners are very good. But when's the last time you watched a Thursday night game and went, wow, that's a classic? So here's a dirty secret. We're Lions fans, and we're talking about an injury report that isn't going to be good to us. Mm-hmm. Lions played Sunday at 1 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Which also, yeah, which means you got to play the little game that Kansas City had to play earlier this year. You still have the better part of 72 hours until you play Sunday. <laughs> Teams that played last night didn't. And what you look at is that even guys who do play on Thursday night football following a Sunday game, they're not the same. NFL, the body doesn't have any time to recover. Players that would be questionable to probable for a Sunday game are out on Thursday. Like, I just wonder as fans, look, the jokes about it being on Amazon Prime and Al Michaels not being interested in being there, all of those still hold true. But I'm being serious. The Lions are going to play this game Sunday. And then you're going to be victimized the same way that my team was last night. You will not have a chance to get people back for what is win, lose, or draw Sunday, a critical divisional road game at Lambeau. Mm -hmm. And I want to know if you've begun to think about it this way because your team might actually be good. I mean, at the beginning of the year, it was great because everybody was healthy. It was the kickoff. But you saw Kansas City had to make that tough choice with Travis Kelsey. Um if this game that game happened on a Sunday, I think he plays, but he couldn't. Why? Because we got to think bigger picture. You're going to have ten days worth of rest. You already have a mass unit going on right now. If anybody gets hurt or they tweak anything, you can't play them. Seventy two hours later, and you're going to be a serious disadvantage in Lambo. Yeah, it's this is something that the league. If you're going to do this. You have to do it sporadically, and you have to pick teams that are coming off of a bye week. I think that's the only fair way to do it. Okay, you had a bye week last week. You play Thursday, and then you get 10 days to recover. That's fair. But making teams go up to what, you know, last night, it wasn't fun because I saw half your team on the sideline. And just by the way, you may want to tell Evan Neal that Bose is pretty good. I don't want to talk. Like he, I'm he not just acknowledging didn't block it. the point I'm making it. But well, the so, Giants made the same mistake the Lions made last Sunday, asking a tight end to block Bosa. <laughs> Daniel Bellinger. Okay, but he looking at point. Saquon on the sideline, like th- 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 what, Andrew Thomas team. is the bigger one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Andrew Thomas, yeah. if the game Sunday, he probably plays. He doesn't. He's a very good left tackle. The point I'm making to just so Lions fans understand, it is a you topic. Don't view this as Mike and Rico talking about their teams it's not it's that thursday night football the players hate it and it's a bad product and now look you're going to play a game sunday that's going to be incredibly physical atlanta is going to pound the rock you are going to try to hammer on them but only one of you is playing the following thursday night Mm -hmm. and for you it's the worst combo it's going on the road in the division so I just want to know, like, look, less than two hours from now, that injury report's coming out. Taylor Decker didn't practice yesterday. I doubt Taylor Decker plays. Kirby Joseph, Dunzo. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, out. Right. Uh, James Houston, out. David Montgomery, out. I mean, Amon Ra's got like a steel plate in his shoe right, now. He's out there with steel work boots. Okay, so now take that. Take the game Sunday and understand anyone who gets dinged up Sunday is going to be out Thursday. Mm -hmm. 
And your season, if you lose, your season, I don't care what anybody says. You go one and three. Oh, the Niners were four and three to start the year last year, and then they ran the table. They're the Niners. And they also picked up Christian McCaffrey. Oh, Bell. The point I'm making is if you fall to one and two, your season's on the line in Green Bay. I'm not going to sit here and spit shine a turd. You can't go 0 and 3 against the NFC. You can't lose back to back home games. You know, you can't lose a, a divisional game like that. So I'm I'm just Yeah, and anybody that's questionable after or or doubtful, they're out. You're not playing. They're out. <laughs> and again, any reoccurrence of injury. Let's say Amon Ra reaggravates what's going on. He's done Thursday. Because you'll you'd rather have him have the 10 days of rest Correct. than the 72 hours. Because you're looking at the bigger picture. 248-539-9797. Is it time to be done with Thursday night football? The product is bad. It is bad for the players. And as a Lions fan, maybe you'll feel differently next Thursday. When that injury report comes out and and you sound like Kelser, what happened? And you're missing half your team. Because that's where we're at. There's no chance for these guys to recover. And look... I thought with, with with your defense, you wore down last week. You're not you don't have a lot of D line depth, and certainly whatever depth you had on the O line is being tested. Now imagine coming out of this game this week and what this could look like. Right. You want to talk about why Sunday's imperative? It's not because Mike and Rico are panicked or jerks or radio. No, I mean we're all of the above, I guess. But my point is, if you win Sunday, it takes some of the pressure off. But if you lose, back against the wall at Green Bay 72 hours later, guys, I got to tell you, I think they're related. I think both, it's a two for one. Mm -hmm. And what you do here really matters. You know what the irony is, Mike? The Lions and the Green Bay will do this again in about two months where they will play on a short schedule. I know. Except for it will be the Thanksgiving Day game. Same two teams. 248-539-9797. We will get to the picks. We will get to the prop bet casino. Uh, We have to talk to TJ, who might be more concerned about this game than I am. And that's saying something. Yeah, I had a phone call with him last night, and he was sending video clips and plays. And I'm like, TJ, go to bed. I guess I'm the only one that feels like you don't have Desmond Ritter. You should feel okay. I also, at some point today, albeit it is Alliance Friday, I'd like to bring up the Ohio State Buckeyes at some point today. They're playing Notre Dame tomorrow night. It's such a big event. Doug Karsh is having Stoney sleep over the house. <laughs> hey, Doug, I brought my jam jams. Stoney's going to be at Casa de Karsh for the kickoff, and we all know Stoney lingers. Well, what happens when you linger for an 8 o'clock kickoff? Oh, that's right. Stoney's in an apron cooking pancakes, 6 a.m. Oh, wait. Pac- you know Pac-12 after dark starts in about an hour. Oh, hey, Doug, I thought we'd listen to Bruce's entire catalog together. Let me tell you about this concert I went to. <laughs> nope, that's not the one. <laughs> Wrong button, and I'd like to apologize. 248-539-9797. Kenny, where are you at with this? Am I selling panic or selling sense? Um, you're selling sense to a degree, but I don't think I'm as panicked as you are. And regarding the Thursday night football stuff, the thing that I'm more concerned about is the product itself. I don't, I, the injuries, every team's going to deal with injuries all year long. Yes, it does put you at a disadvantage, but if they put some good games, some actually decent product last night, I put it on the second screen because I was so disinterested in that game. I have zero to do with at least the lions game was interesting because it was our team and because it was a big upset. But beyond that, how many good Thursday night football games this year are you going to be locked into? In all fairness, I was there for the uh, Phillies and Vikings. I was locked into that. Okay. One. I they, was. The Eagles. I don't I mean, believe, I'm sorry, I don't believe Bryce Harper yeah. took Eagles, on the Vikings. Yes. I'm just saving you yes. from 30 tickets. Yes. Carry on. No, I just I think Thursday night football, if the product was but any better, Do you understand injury, why I'm, I'm bringing it up before it happens with the Lions? Kenny, I, I, I think... A lot of people in this country, they only react to it if it happens to them. If it doesn't affect you, it's not a problem. Like, we've lost a lot of our humanity. The whole point is, as sports fans, we're very myopic. And I'm making a point that when you look at the Lions, take the injury report we're going to see in an hour and 45 minutes, right? And you go, okay, Sunday, the idea you come out unscathed is unrealistic. Kenny, there's a very good chance that take the guys who missed this weekend's game. 
that if you didn't play Thursday and you played Sunday, they'd be back. But instead, they're already going to miss it. Now compound it that anyone who gets a boo-boo, mm -hmm. probably not playing Thursday. Mm -hmm. And that could be the game. If you guys want to play this game of there's, you know, shout out the legendary coach, Hubie Brown. Plenty of time, plenty of time. <laughs> you know, 1.4 on the clock, you got time for two passes and a dribble. It's only 0.2 seconds. Plenty of time. If we're talking about winning the division and being real and winning 11 games, you can't depend on going 8-2 and two in a 10-week span. You can't start 1-3. and three. Yeah, you can't hope that you can reclaim and do what you did last year and play catch-up. That doesn't happen every year. Look at the Vikings. They are the hard luck team this year. Oh No, no, I'm just saying. No, no. But it doesn't carry over from what you've done before. Oh, this is Kenny's new line. Hit it, Kenny. And you just hate to see it. <laughs> Last year, they were the child of luck. I don't want to hear about bad luck Vikings this year. You they just were such hate frauds. It. They should have been sponsored by Enron last year. 248-539-9797. Let's do the business on a football Friday. By the way, yeah, are you going to finally put some respect on Purdy's name? Hell no. Okay, just checking. What, are you kidding me? Just that checking. wasn't Rob Woodson out there. It was Darnay Holmes. Get out of here. 300 yards. No Ooh. picks. Against the Vaughn. They did play your play, that replay of the play of uh, Bravaro. Did you see that? I, it warmed I like, my heart. Mike, I was like, good for Mike. Carried, that was my highlight. He carried Ronnie Lott down the field for 40 yards. That was my highlight. <laughs> uh, America's Too bad it was 40 years ago. 